the sum of our lives can be defined by every new experience. One experience followed immediately by the next. Some experiences a product of repetition, others a product of happenstance. The journey I want to share is an unpredictable one, doing things now only to figure them out later. A perpetual cascade of the unknown, an adventure by definition. I share these not to gloat, but to inspire. I share these to inspire, because through it I find solace. I know not what tomorrow will bring, but I hope to share this saga with you. So I've actually already filmed this video several times now, um, and I've screwed up several times. I've missed certain parts of the timeline, I've had to go back on them. So this video is actually just going to kind of chronicle how I got to Porto, Portugal. Impressive. And to do that, we have to step back to about 2004 when World of Warcraft came out. Odd segue, I know. I started playing World of Warcraft in 2004, and through World of Warcraft, I met my wife and married five years later. During that time, we kind of sat back and, and started talking about what it was that we wanted in life. You know, did we want kids? No. Nope. Did we want to travel? Yes. Uh, you know, what are things that we both wanted to share together? And, and in that, we had discovered that both of us wanted to travel. We realized it didn't make much sense for us to plan out 10 and 15 different vacations, that it would make more sense for us to just move there at some point. So we told all of our friends and family members, hey, at some point in time, we're going to move to Europe. We're going to be there for two, three, five years. Our, our heart was set on that goal. Uh, unfortunately, I've been working in the IT field for 15 years. I was setting up entire businesses and setting up entire estates. Um, it was all very boots on the ground. Knowing that I was the one that was kind of preventing us from being able to travel as much, I started training for cybersecurity. Uh, did really well, really enjoyed it, until I started to look for new jobs. I started to realize that a lot of it was going to be behind a desk, in an office, behind a phone, unable to travel again. And so I decided I needed to do something else. And so I looked into myself to find what are my passions, what are things that I'm interested in. I like games. I like movies. I like racing. I like cars. Uh, what are the things that I could do that could incorporate all the things that I like in a way that I could share my enthusiasm with. Rabbit hair. Sorry, I've got, I've got two rabbits down here. And so I decided to make a channel focused on sim racing. I have a website, simaddict.net. I've got a channel called Simaddict. I've produced a little bit of content for it. Because we've already made the move to Europe, I'll t talk about that a little in a little bit. Um, I had to leave my sim rig behind, so I don't have my sim rig needed to produce additional content, which is why I'm creating this channel. We had decided we needed to start planning for the move to Portugal. So we talked to some lawyers in Lisbon, they told us what information we needed to gather, we gathered it all up, we submitted it to the consulate in San Francisco, and uh, they told us within 45 to 60 days it would be approved, and so we planned for 60 days. We figured it says at 60 days, worst case scenario, that's when we will move. We'll, uh, that, that also gave us time to be able to do all the stuff we needed to do. Um, we had to sell everything in the house. We had to sell my wife's car, sell my car, you know, set up the, the, our house to be rented out, get a tenant lined up, uh, plan all of our flights, plan all of our rentals, uh, just pure chaos. We managed to get through all of that, and then in January of this year, we made the move. We rented a car, we got a gigantic Ford excursion, we packed up all of our belongings and all of our animals and we carted them all across the US from California to New York. Then we had our flights from New York to various parts of Europe. So my wife and I, we had our flight scheduled uh, to take our two dogs from New York to France. Now we had a friend of mine, I flew him up from California, he took our rabbits from New York to France. 
Once we arrived, we picked up the rabbits from my friend, jumped into another rental car, and then drove from, uh, from Paris, France, all the way down to Porto, Portugal. Two days later, my cousin, with her dog and our cat, arrived in Lisbon. I drove down there, picked her up, brought her back to the house, turned in the rental car, and we lived in Porto for about 40 days. And during that time, all of our visas got denied. So, wonderful. Reaching out to the lawyers to try to figure out why we got denied, or even our lawyers were perplexed. And so we put together a little packet with some additional information, filed for an appeal. Um, but unfortunately, the way Europe works is you can only be in the Schengen EU area for a maximum of 90 days within any 180 day period. So we staggered our time out as long as possible, um, keeping the animals here in Portugal. There's no way we're going to go through the drama of getting them back stateside. So I was here for the first 40 days alone, and then my cousin took over for her 40 days. Um, and then after our little mini vacation, my wife came back over here to take over for my cousin. Uh, my cousin went over to, to stay in Turkey for a little bit. So, we, so what we planned then is that I would fly back. Um, I would experience the 24 hours of Le Mans, fly to Porto. My wife had a rental car lined up. We packed all the animals. Then we drove to Calais, France, where we took the channel into the UK. And then from there, we drove all the way across the UK to a little town called Mary Tavy. It was wonderful. It was great. We figured we'd just ride out that remaining uh, 30 days before we'd be allowed back in the uh, EU. We had a wonderful time. It was a little scary at first. We lost our cat. He escaped out one of those little double like barn windows. We found him about 83 hours later at 3.30 in the morning. Had little headlamps walking around town uh, looking everywhere for him, but we, we, we got him. It was worth it. <laughs> and then uh, and then, yeah, it, would just, it just became a really nice bonding moment for me and my wife. Went to a lot of nice restaurants, we walked around, we went hiking, and then we found Warhammer stores. My wife decided that it would be fun for us to paint together, and it just snowballed from there. We got a lot of paints, a lot of brushes, paint accessories, magnifying glasses to help us be better painters. We watched all sorts of tutorial videos, we subscribed to Warhammer Plus. And so yeah, so not content just to, to paint the regular ultramarines, I decided that I wanted to paint the Retributor Astartes, which is amazing. If you haven't seen it, absolutely go check it out. Yeah, so while we were there in the UK, we, we made the most of it. We, we got some tickets to go see the Formula One Grand Prix at Silverstone, which is amazing. And then a week later, I got to go to the Goodwood Festival of Speed, which was spectacular. If you're a car guy and you love cars, you absolutely have to make it a point to go to the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Just, I saw all my favorite cars. Every single car that I've ever loved, that I've ever had a poster of, a wallpaper of, you name it, I got to see it at Goodwood. So for me, that was that was absolutely the highlight of my UK trip. So we, we made the most of it, we really enjoyed the UK, and then unfortunately our, uh, our appeal got denied. So, with the appeal being denied, decided, okay, well, we'll have to reach out to our lawyers, we'll get this all figured out, we'll just head back to Portugal, get the family together, we'll make the most of it. We decided to celebrate being back home by getting a car. Not not a new car, I'm a, I'm a fan of used cars. And so we got a 2015 Mercedes E250 wagon. It's got the AMG body kit, it's got the AMG sport package, it, it's the Edition E model, which came with a few additional extras. We're gonna use this to be able to travel a lot more, to be able to explore more Portugal rather than just being limited to the distance that an Uber driver will take us. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. I know it's uh, <laughs> it uh, not the most exciting, but that's, that's the story thus far. Have a wonderful day. See you later.